Once you've got to the point where you want to do the shaping for your heel, you want to split your stitches into two sections and only knit one half. So for mine, I've got 40 stitches and I'll be working 20 stitches to begin the heel. Obviously, that's not as straightforward if you divide by three. But what I'm going to do is put 20 stitches on the centre needle and the other half are going to split between the two side needles. So, I'll have, so I've got 16 stitches currently on this needle, which means I need another four adding. So I'm going to slip two stitches off of each of the side needles to make this into 20. So now I've done that, I've got 20 stitches on this needle and I've got 10 each on these. First I'm going to knit the first needle as normal to get the stitches to the centre needle. So for this part I'm going to be working back and forth for the next 20 rows rather than working in the round as I was doing before. As a general guide you want to work the same amount of rows for the first part of the heel as you have in stitches. If you wanted to keep the fabric to the same texture as the rest of the sock you would simply work, knit all the stitches in one row and then purl on the next row after turning your work rather than knitting all the rows otherwise the fabric will be the knit stitch. But I'm not going to be working the heel this way. I'm going to be knitting one stitch and purling one stitch on each row. I like doing this for the heel section because I think it creates a bit of a cushion to the heel. Of course, if you prefer your fabric to match the rest of the sock, you should just knit one row and purl the next row for this section. So I'm going to begin by slipping one stitch first. So this is the, going to count as my knit stitch. So for my next stitch, I'm going to purl. And then for the rest of the row, I'm just going to knit one, purl one, until I get to the end. And when I get to the end of the stitches on this needle, instead of continuing in the round on the next needle as I have been doing up to now, I'm going to turn my work and then again I'm going to slip the first stitch. And then purl. And then I'm going to knit one purl one along the rest of the row like I did before. Once you've worked the first part of the heel, you want to do the shaping for the ball of the heel. To do this, you want to reduce your stitches at each turn. I'm going to skip two stitches each time. So for the first row of this section, I'm going to slip the first stitch. Just to match the size of what I've done for the first part of the shaping. And following that I'm going to knit almost to the end of the row but not knit the last two. So then I want to turn. And then I want to knit back to the other side. So I want to remember, of course, on this row that I want to purl so that I keep the knit to this side. And then I want to purl back, but I want to skip again the last two at this side.
So again, once I've got to the end and missed the last two, I want to turn again. And now I want to knit back along this row, but this time I'm going to skip two plus another two. So when I've got four left, again, I want to turn. And then I want to purl back and miss two plus two, so these four. So again, once you get to the end and skip the last two plus two, you want to knit your next row and then you want to skip two, four, six. So each time you get to your knit row, you add in your next set of two until you end up in the middle. Once you've completed this part, you should have something that looks like this. And now you want to rejoin the section you've just created to the rest of the sock so you can work in the round again. Obviously, if you just started knitting straight into rounds again, you end up with a massive gap and a really weird shaped sock. So you need to pick up stitches along the edge. I've seen some people do this with a needle, but I tend to use a crochet hook. Obviously, if you don't have a hook, you can use a darning needle or a knitting needle, but I find a hook much easier. So I'm going to use this crochet hook and because I slipped the first stitch on each row I find the spaces to work in much easier than if I'd knitted at the beginning stitch. If you're familiar with crochet they resemble the stitches you work into when crocheting. So I'm going to pick up 10 stitches from the edge of this heel section I've just created and I'm going to put these on the centre needle I worked the heel section on. Then I want to knit the next needle as a regular round. So I'm just going to knit this as normal and I'm going to do the same thing for the next needle as well. So next I want to pick up the stitches for the other side of the heel. So this time I'm going to be doing the same thing again using a crochet hook, only this time instead of adding it onto the central needle, I'm going to be adding it onto this needle, which I'm going to add the 10 stitches on and then continue the knitting along this needle.
So once you've picked up all your stitches, you can just continue knitting onto this needle from the central needle and this becomes your central needle with all your extra stitches on. So it is going to be a little bit tight at first until you start reducing some of the stitches. So once you've done that, you should end up with all your extra stitches on this central needle. So you just want to complete this round as normal for your last needle. And then you're back at the beginning of your round again. So you just want to knit all these stitches as normal. So once you've done that, you're back to the beginning of your round there. So although this leaves me with a lot of stitches on one needle, I prefer it like this because it makes it easier to remember my places for reductions. I always reduce from the centre needle and I always reduce the two at the end each time. So because I began with 20 stitches on this section, I want to reduce down these stitches at either end each time on every round until I'm back to having 20 stitches for the heel part. So to begin the next round, you just want to do your first needle as normal. And then once you switch to the next needle where you've got all your extra stitches on, you want to knit two together at the beginning and knit two together at the end. And you want to keep doing this on every round until you're back to having 20 stitches on this needle or however many you have for yours, depending. So you want to take the first two and knit these two together. And then you want to knit the rest of the row as normal. And it might be a little bit tight if you've put them all on the same needle as I have. But it will loosen up as you get to reducing all your stitches. So once you get to the last two stitches, as you did in the beginning, you want to knit these two stitches together. And then you'll just knit this needle as normal. And then when you go back to here again, as I said before, just knit two together at either side and just keep doing this until you're back to the original amount of stitches that you had, which for me is 20, but for you maybe slightly different. So once you're back to the original amount of stitches, you should have something that looks like this. So you've worked the heel part of your sock. So now you can transfer back to your original setup if you want. So for me, that will be taking two stitches at either end and putting them back onto the side needles. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I am going to do it because I like to have it in the original setup. So for me, it'll be 12, 12 and 16. And from there, you can work to the toe. 